There are over 1.5 billion active Gmail users worldwide. As the dominant force in email services, you might assume that they have the best security measures and always prioritize your privacy. But out of the box, Gmail is easily one of the least secure email providers. This is because Google tends to prioritize convenience over security. Google hands out some handy features like one-click logins, app-based integrations, and the ability to easily create accounts with pre-filled personal information stored by Google. So if you prioritize your security, don't use Gmail. Unless you go ahead and fix the issues yourself. Believe it or not, there are ways you can make Gmail more secure. So to help you out, here are some Gmail security tips to make your Gmail experience much better. To get started, let's jump straight into what is arguably the most crucial security step, two-factor authentication. Two-factor authentication means you need two sources to confirm your identity. For example, factor one could be your password, while factor two can be a six-digit code sent to another email or your smartphone. This form of authentication means that the thief needs to have access to the sources to access your Gmail. This is way more secure than simply relying on passwords, which can be leaked and sold on the dark web to enterprising criminals. Are destined to become thieves themselves! <laughs> Even you! I wouldn't become a thief, lady. I'm a pretty good guy. Yeah, get your glasses on, Grandma. This kid is pure. Now, you might just set your second authenticator up as your phone number or another email, but this isn't that secure. Often the best second factor is an external security key, a physical security device. You could rely on email and SMS, but those are at risk for the same hijacking attacks. SMS attacks come from SIM swapping, meaning hackers can pretend to have your phone number to access text-based authentication. If you have a device like a Titan security key or a YubiKey, hackers will need a physical device to access your accounts, which is impossible unless they go into your house and ask for it, which is impossible unless they're really, really nice about it. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. If I could just get that wallet right there. If you can't afford a physical key, a backup email or SMS is better than nothing. You could also rely on an authentication app. These apps are more secure than SMS and email, but can be inconvenient if your phone decides not to turn on. Yeah, I've had this problem before. Goodbye to my Ethereum. Google Authenticator is fine, but you can rely on LastPass or Twilio Authy for alternative solutions. Speaking of LastPass, let's discuss our next important point, creating strong passwords. Strong passwords have three different requirements. First, they need to be long. Longer passwords are harder to guess because there is a longer cycle of characters and numbers to potentially go through. Password cracking software can run through thousands of combinations incredibly quickly, making long passwords naturally more secure. Second, they need to avoid the usage of personally identifiable information. This means you should avoid using birthdays, social security numbers, and the names of your family members or pets. Password crackers can retrieve this information, and some of it is incredibly easy to retrieve. And finally, these passwords need to be unique, meaning you shouldn't reuse passwords between multiple locations. When you reuse passwords, you put multiple accounts at risk, creating the chance that someone can get into your account by guessing based on that information, otherwise known as a brute force attack. If you find yourself struggling with these passwords, you might use a password manager. Alternatively, Google does let you set up personal devices where you can automatically log in. So you don't need to re-enter your password when logging into recognized devices. If you don't want to use a password manager, think of two random words, one symbol, and a few numbers. For example, unicorn, exclamation mark, sour, kratz, 82, hashtag, or 22, tirek, a, b, b, a, g, question mark, 88. These should be random, memorable, and have nothing to do with anything that you do in real life. So if you make sauerkraut out of unicorns, you might consider another password. Another important measure for maintaining your security is to get strong malware protection. Beyond controlling the security of what you put out, you also need to maintain the safety of what's on your computer. You'll need to scan your computer with antivirus software to do that regularly. Malware, typically keyloggers, can scan what keys you press as you enter your password. That malware sends the logged data to third parties, who use that information to hijack your previously secure passwords. Thankfully, Google does have a natural defense against this with automatic login. So if you come in from a recognized device, you might not risk a keylogger. But there are other viruses that still put your email at risk by sending back personal information from your Gmail browsing. That being said, 
don't enable this convenient login feature from a public device. While it might be convenient for you later, it's also just as convenient for Tim, who has no business in your Gmail account. Free software like Windows Defender, Avast, and AVG can help secure your computer. Setting aside time once a week to scan your computer can help reduce the likelihood of issues. However, this software won't provide any security for your mobile phones. It also doesn't prevent incoming attacks before they become a problem. Of course, incoming attacks don't always come from where you'd expect. For more excellent protection, I recommend you get software with real-time protection across multiple devices. Cost-effective solutions can be found through software like Bitdefender, Norton, and Malwarebytes. You can find further discounts for this antivirus software in the description. You'll also need to check for regular software updates to prevent further vulnerabilities. As software grows, so do the hackers trying to hijack it. Software creators provide regular software updates to prevent these hackers from getting your data. These updates often come as a response to found vulnerabilities. So if you don't make these updates, you'll keep the old version's vulnerabilities or bugs. Hackers can exploit these bugs or vulnerabilities to steal your information. Software often comes with some way to update it automatically. For example, all apps on Google Play or the Apple App Store can be set up for automatic updates. If your software doesn't have this feature, you'll need to check it manually. If the software relies heavily on communication, you'll want to check it once a week. If your software doesn't have automatic updates, it might also feel a bit unsophisticated. Oh my god! This also brings up an important point. How secure is your software? You might consider an alternative if the company has a poor security reputation. Reliable, regularly updated software keeps you safe online. To find current software vulnerabilities, use the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, or CISA, Known Vulnerabilities Catalog. It mentions some of the more significant software vulnerabilities. Another way you can scrutinize your apps is through a Google Security Checkup. A security checkup provides personalized security recommendations from Google to your Google account. One of these recommendations is to set up two-factor authentication. Did I mention that two-factor authentication is important yet? Hey, stop beating that dead horse. The security checkup offers two additional features. First, it lets you add or update your recovery options. This enables you to add or remove items from your two-factor authentication list. This might be important if you're transitioning from a weak to a strong form of protection, like SMS, to a physical key. Don't forget to remove less secure verification tools when adding more secure verification tools. The security checkup also allows you to check in to see apps that have access to your data. You might find apps you haven't used for years on this list. You might also find some memories. It almost feels like it was yesterday. Or today. To remove these unwanted apps, click the three dot menu to the right of the app and click remove. If you accidentally remove something important, reconnect it through the usual process within your app. Google lets you liberally give access permission without much consideration. You'll get a few seconds and a single pop-up window to decide how to handle this, which isn't enough to make an informed decision. You might think twice before giving up app-based access to these providers. This consideration can prevent potential data leak sources protecting your data. It might be time to say that one vital word the next time you see a game asking for your personal information. No. You can also use the security checkup screen to see your current devices. If you see any unrecognized or suspicious activity, it might be time to change your password and remove these unknown devices. Of course, there is one method that ultimately beats all of these. If you want to keep your Gmail account secure, don't have one. That's right, Google does allow you to delete your account. Despite it coming with some inconveniences, more secure email services are out there. Secure email services don't ask for personal data provide robust encryption tools, and are open source. This means you don't have to rely on a giant tech company to get your stuff done. Secure alternative emails you can use are ProtonMail, Tutanota, Zoho Mail, Postio, and Mailbox.org. 
Some of these, like Zoho, also offer alternatives to Google tools like spreadsheets or docs. Many of these also provide plenty of tools for business owners. Ultimately, having a secure email address can help you maintain your privacy. But whatever service you use, check out their privacy policy to understand how they use your data. But regardless of how you handle your Gmail security, these tips will help you stay secure while using or not using these accounts. If you have some extra tips, then please leave them in the comments. Otherwise, if you thought we helped you out, leave us a like and subscribe to help us grow the channel. After all, we can't be doing this without you. So thanks for checking out the video. Thanks for checking out the channel. And I will see you next time.